Okay, so we often get the question of how did we get involved with Peregrine Falcons, and uh, it, it started a little more when we were after we were married. Um, we did a lot of we always did a lot of outdoor things together. We went hiking and we went and looked at birds and different animals and things like that. We were always into nature and wildlife, and uh, and then when we learned about the Peregrine Falcons at the Hilliard Road Bridge, like Kat said before, we wanted to go check them out because we knew about the ones at the Terminal Tower. And when we went downtown, or we went to the Hilliard Road Bridge, we were able to see them up close and see their behaviors and, and really uh, communicate about that and really connect into nature through the falcons. And so that became a very special thing for us. Um, you know, I came from a background where I didn't have family interests so much in the outdoors. I was lucky to be raised by the lake, and so I was able to be out by the lake, but not so much into the nature and the woods and things like that. So Chad really, um, his experience with the outdoors really en enlightened something in me. So enjoyed that. Yeah, and, and as a kid, I was always in, into wildlife, uh, into nature. We always had uh, pets, uh, but once I got a little older, then I started seeing all the the birds of prey that's our that that was my main focus uh and then like she said once the peregrines once we started watching peregrines uh that was it for us um so that's how um, pretty much how we got started and then uh like i mentioned before the ohio division wildlife uh, kept seeing us at the peregrine sites and asked us to monitor for them because they couldn't hit all the sites so uh, we gave them a lot of information over the years uh uh, helped them out uh, quite a bit, and um, uh, so we were just going sites, just helping helping the parents. We we've had to rescue many over the years, help them out a little bit, but um, we we just enjoy doing it. Once we got into trying to assist with the recovery, it became something that just took hold for us. It was it was beyond just telling them when the eggs were laid and when the chicks were hatched and when they were fledging. It became really a, a, a full-time thing for us. So we really would think about how could we best be available at the sites when the birds were fledging and how can we be most helpful to them and how can we monitor how much we should get close versus back off and let them work it out themselves and so it's been a, a strategy in progress for us to try to figure out how to be most helpful to the birds and the species um, you know we really believe in helping the individual birds and we really believe in helping the species of, as a whole and there are always the new threats so um, just like with the DDT era it took some uh, huge acknowledgement of this from the agricultural industry that there really was a problem for DDT to be banned in the first place. And now we always have new threats in the environment. There are flame retard retardants that are issues. And, um, and we just learned about mercury contamination in falcons and how uh, prevalent that is. And so there's always, there are always new threats. And so even when these birds are at a healthy status population-wise, there's still reason to follow them and learn from them and track them and pay attention to what's going on with them, um, especially because they're an apex predator. And when you see something affect them and, and their breeding and their population, then you better believe it's going to affect everything else around them at a, at a, at a more cellular level and certainly get into the human population too. And historically, there, there's actually more now than in the East and Midwest than there there were before the wipeout, before DDT. So uh, they've recovered really well, but we still need to, to monitor. And as she said, there's still threats out there for them. And so uh, that's why it's one of the reasons why we keep doing it. And just in terms of protection of our uh, wildlife in general and uh, and caring for wildlife in the environment, it's. Uh, you know, there's a lot of interest, which is great, but there's a lot of possessive interest of people that want to own pieces of the environment or take eggs or take chicks or, you know, things like that. And there's illegal trapping and there's all sorts of things like that that can happen. So we always try to be a little careful about, even though we have our page, we try to share information without getting overly detailed because we also want to protect the species and, and try to protect the individual chicks and nests and young and and uh, try to not share more than we should, so we try to be careful about that as well.